I've been in the wrestling business for over 25 years and I'm gonna show you the secrets that I know of professional wrestling. You're a loser. A tough guy. Jesse Hernandez, welcome to my wrestling school, the School of Hard Knocks. You must find strength. You are about to succeed when Caesar, Napoleon, and Hitler have failed. You become master of the universe. Hey, Wolf, Scott. <laughs> What's up, man? What are you guys doing here? Ah, uh, we, we did a film, Backyard Dogs, and they trained us here at the School of Hard Knocks. So we just came back, we like the people, good training. Yeah, and Jesse Hernandez, our teacher, he's great, and it's a, it's a great way to keep in fit. And it was, so we thought we could come back here and continue to work out. Oh, it's yeah. kind of like learning a skill too, like martial arts, like, like martial, arts. martial arts, boxing, weightlifting. It's great, keep in shape. Basically, it's something different for females, especially a mom that's married, has three kids. And it shows older women could do anything they want in life. And I got into the sport to prove to my brother and every other older guy out there, a girl can do a guy's sport. If he wants to wrestle, I'm going to take him to a school to learn how to do it properly rather than some of this backyard wrestling that we've been hearing about. He wants to be a pro wrestler and this is the best way for him to learn. Gets you stress free. I love wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go train. See you later. I'm going to introduce to you my assistant and student, Crazy Casey, the wild man from the Desert Sands, who's also the Empire Wrestling Federation champion. You know what? Personally, I don't care for any of you backyard wrestlers. But if you and Ferry Arms are gonna wrestle, you can learn how to do it the right way. And on this tape, we're gonna show you how. You think you got what it takes to be a wrestler? Well, spend a day at the Slam School Academy to watch how the pros train. Think. You can take it. All right, you wrestlers. The first thing you want to do before you step into the ring is protect yourself. That means pads on your knees, pads on your elbows, pads everywhere. Pads, pads, pads. You get it? You gotta think safety, you gotta think pads, you gotta think protection. Remember, even some of the top athletes get hurt. They're constantly getting hurt out there. Some of the bigger names in wrestling are always getting hurt. First thing you need to do is warm up and stretch to get the blood flowing so you don't get injured in the ring. First, you need to get in position. You start off with your feet shoulder width apart, your knees slightly bent. Start working them arms in a windmill pattern. Backwards, backwards and forwards, like that. There you go, there you go. Now you add the squat to it. You squat down below, parallel with your thighs. There we go. All right, guys. A little deeper there, Scott. You're gonna do these. You got your toes turned out too far. Point your toes forward. There you go. Come on, guys. Get the blood flowing. There we go. Nice little cardiovascular exercise too, if you ain't careful. <laughs> okay, now that we got the blood flowing, got the body warmed up, now it's time to stretch the body. Walter? Now, I know this part might seem kind of boring, but it's not, it's very important, and it should take about 20, 15 minutes, all right? What you want to do is you want to stretch your entire body, first starting off with your head, going forward and backwards, about eight times, all right? Then you go side to side, about eight times, that's your neck. Now you want to go to your shoulders. You're going to go forward with your shoulders. You do large arms like this that'll help warm you up real quick. And backwards, eight times. Again, then you want to do your rib cage, side to side. Almost looks like a dance move, right? But it warms you up. Forward and backwards, eight times. Your waist, you want to move your waist around. Looks like you're getting your groove on. <laughs> go back to the other way, see? Eight times. Then you go down to your knees. Take your knees, you want to go around to the right eight times, then up to the left eight times. 
Finally, you go down to the ground, you stretch out your hamstrings and your legs, and you're almost good to go. A good stretch for the hamstrings, you got three of them. First one consists of a stretch to the side, foot pointed. You want to do this, you want to hold this stretch for eight counts. And then you want to go to the other side, pointed foot. Do that on the other side for eight counts. Flex foot. Go to the other side, flex foot. Each time you do this, you hold it for eight counts. Second stretch is a runner stretch, like this. You want to hold this for about eight counts. Go to the other side, switch legs. Hold this for about eight counts. Come back, go down to the ground, and that's when you begin your the other hamstring stretch. You want to do these for about maybe three sets. Okay, now that you got the blood flowing, your body's all nice and warmed up, it's time to start off with some advanced tumbling. Let's start off with some front rolls. All right, now we're gonna do some back rolls. Bobby, let's go guys. Look at that, look how pretty that is, Bobby. Okay, now this is a little bit more difficult. This is what you call a right three-quarter roll. Bobby wants you to demonstrate how it goes. Take your right arm, put it up over your head, take your right leg, point your toe where you want to go, and throw yourself over. Okay, next. You gotta think like a ball. No, no, what was that? What was that there, Scott? Sorry, sir. Come on back here, Scott, let's do that one again. That's not how you do it, pal. You'll make me get here and show you how, huh? Okay, right hand over your head. Take your right foot. Take a big step out there. Point your right toe where you want to go, and go right over. Bend your leg. Come right up on your one on your left knee. Point your right foot up and right leg where I want to go. Point your toe where you want to go. Bad. Not bad. You just get a little bit of taste comes with practice, and you'll have. Okay. the proper way of taking a back bump. Some of you people don't have rings like I do here. Some are using mattresses or out in your backyards. And uh, safety is very important. This is a standard safety pad. You can pick up in any martial arts or sporting goods store. It's about three inches thick. And believe me, when you're practicing back bumps, this will save you a lot of heartache. The first thing that I want to teach you in order to take a good back bump is you uh, lay down flat on your back, feet, this position flat, you hug yourself. At the time that you open up your hands like this, you bring your head up, elevate it. Do it again, kind of like that, without, without hitting hard for now. Okay? And also, you want to arch. As you open up your arms, you want to arch. So I can actually put my hand underneath the elbow here, and you will not hurt me. Try, try a few. If you do it right, you're not going to hurt me. There you go. That's how you know if you're doing this right. Try it again. The reason that I ask to raise the head is so that you don't hit your head when, when, you, when you hit this canvas you, and then you wind up getting a concussion. So you want to raise it at the time your hands hit. The second part of taking this back bump safely is doing this exercise right here. From a squat position, you bend your knees and you shoot your legs straight up in the air as you land on your back. Go ahead. Perfect. Try it again. Excellent. One more time. 
good form. Excellent. See how he lands? Stay back down. Show. Get back down. You want to land in this position, legs straight up in the air, okay? And of course, head elevated. You don't want to get a concussion. And see how he protects himself? The hands and the back hit at the same time. And now the third part of this exercise of learning how to take a back bump properly from a standing position, what Brian here is going to do is going to raise, elevate this leg up in the air as he's, and right before he falls, once his back hits this area right here, he's going to shoot that second leg straight up in the air. Try one. Very good. And see, coming up to your feet. What I want to point out to you is that the fall is not really from a high distance, okay? The fall is actually from this distance because by the time that foot raises up, his back is already here. So it's really not a dangerous move at all. Try it one more time. If you noticed, by the time this foot was elevated, his back was only this far off the ground. Learn to crawl before you walk, walk before you run. Same thing in taking a bump. From a squat position, throw your legs straight up in the air and your fall is really gonna be from this distance. Go ahead. It's actually from this height at this point. Okay, come on up and do from a standing position, one leg up at a time. Go ahead. By the time this foot went up, he was off the ground about from this distance here. Now from, from the top position again, throwing both legs straight up in the air, you're talking about a higher position. Go ahead. He fell from this distance now. So you went from here to probably here, and now up to here. Now, boys and girls, it's time to party. Let's learn how to do clotheslines, all right? Now, the basis of a clothesline is to hurt your opponent, I think. But to do it properly, what you do, you make a fist, and you put it right over your opponent's shoulder, just like this. You meet chest to chest. This really doesn't, I'm not really clotheslining him in the throat. We're going chest to chest, and he's gonna buck. All right? You gotta make a big swing, you gotta make a, you gotta make a big sell on, to make you look like you're really tearing his head off. You know what I mean? Go way back, and boom, okay? You ready to demonstrate this? Let's do it. All right. Shoot him off the ropes, and I'm gonna give him a clothesline right in the middle of the ring. <laughs> oh, did that hurt? What do you think about that? Not bad. Always remember, when taking a clothesline, you gotta sell the move. Oh, and if you remember, you go back to the very beginning, it's a basic back bump. Check it out. <laughs> Fun, isn't it? Walter, you guys can do this? You yeah. go, boss. Okay, now, remember, Walter, make a fist and put it right over his shoulder. Just like this. So, chest to chest on it, okay? And just give it a big swing and just come in and boom. That's all it is. All right? Yep, Let's got see it. it. Now, we're just gonna make a fist and put it right over his shoulder, right. okay? Just like he's got a head over here, okay? It's gonna be just like this, just boom. You're gonna go chest to chest. Just like that, you put it right because it's really the chest that's gonna make the bump. Okay. All right? Yeah. Now when you grab his, you grab it, you grab his wrist too. Make sure okay. your arm's over the top rope when he shoots you off so you don't get stuck between them. Okay. Okay, now shoot him right off. Go. Oh no, no, what was that? You out of Nutcracker's ballet or something, Val? Well, I come here to learn, so you need tell to me take how to a bump. Right. You need to take a bump. You jump up and you're flying like that. All you do is basically, come here, come out here. Bend down, like this, leap up, bump like that. Bend down, bump. There you go, why don't you do that when he clotheslines you? 
Don't jump up. Just fall down. That'll kind of work. That'll kind of work. Hey, KC, I got yes, an sir. idea. Why don't you give a warrant? Show them how it's done. You think? Why not? <laughs> Can you fly, Scotty? Oh, I see you doing that one. Good. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah! Now that's how you bump right there. That felt pretty good. But actually, if you show me how to take the bump, why don't you let me do it to you and you show me how to do the you bump? You do it to me? Yeah. Well, I we'll try it point. once. Right, right, right. Oh. How's that? Not bad. Not bad at all. Next! Was well done. You like that? I Let's see how you do it. Let's see how you take it from a professional. Yeah. Grab my wrist. You always grab your wrist. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Don't bring that arm up. Get up here. Let me show you what you did wrong. You brought that arm across me like this. Well, I'm doing this. You just keep that arm down. If anything, bring it up like this. Okay. When I come and hit you, we're going to hit chest to chest. All right, one more gotcha. time. Right. Grab me. Arm over the top rope. There you go. Yeah. That'll work. That'll work. Now you think you can give one? Oh, I think I can really give one. Can I give one to you, boss? Let me show you. Show me what you got. I'm gonna grab the wrist here, right? And I grab you back. Give you a good push. Not bad. Always remember, the person giving the clothesline and the person receiving the clothesline must work together as a team. They gotta sell the move 100% or the audience won't buy it. Remember, work together. You're only as good as your opponent is. If you don't sell it right the first time, I'll come to your house next time and make sure you sell it right. Every wrestler needs to know how to strike his opponent properly. And now we're going to show you two different kind of moves. One of them is the overhand chop, and the second one is the underhand chop. Now this is the overhand chop. Oh, 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 wait a minute. You gotta come in with more authority than that. Use your upper body for this move. This is your distance from you to him. Okay, you come out. in with this hand all the way back from back here. You see how I swing my body? Okay. Look. Just like so. All right, put a little more action into Absolutely. it then. Absolutely. Measure off like this? Yes. Okay. Like that? More swing from that arm. More swing left, off the your arm. arm. On your left arm. As you drop back. Okay, okay. More pop there you go. That's How's that better? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's not too bad. No, that's not bad. So always got to remember, good. open up your chest for your opponent so you can get that good sound. And you got to sell the move. What you need to do is you need to come in this way. You should use more upper body, just like like from this other crunch or slap, uh -huh. you use a lot of upper body. From this side, you've got to use a lot of upper body, just like so. All right, so you really want me to get my weight behind yes, it? Yes, put your weight behind it. That's better. Ah. 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. Hey, that's enough now. Hey, let's get these other guys in here. Oh, it's all fake, huh? Forget what this, those guys were doing. The important thing is you want to cut your head and uh, when you do this slap, you want to hit this area here, the meaty part of the chest. Don't want to hit way up here. Don't want to hit here on the bone. This is your distance. This is how far this arm is going to go. You cup it slightly and you come in with full force and you slap. Just like so. Okay, now for the other, for the upper hand, make sure that that hits way up there and you come in with full force from way back here into the chest. 
into the meaty part of his chest, right in here. Why don't you take over with this guy? Got a cupped hand, throughout the head, overhand. Step around, hide him up, same distance. Ah! As you hit me, I'm up. They need to see it everywhere. If you're just going like this, I see nothing. I see that 40 rows back. Selling. No problem. I'm giving it up a little bit by kneeling down. Probably looks like I'm laying it in. She's fine. Your head up, a little high in the neck. Every time I hit you, arms are up in the face. It hurts. Get your face up. Cuff it up. Get this right there. All right. You're going to aim right at this spot right here. You try to stay up off her throat, off her shoulder, everything right in the upper breast. Okay? We've been wrestling for three months. Okay, my name's Elizabeth, I'm the mom. This is my daughter. Elizabeth, same name. Oh yeah, yeah. we wrestle each other, uh-huh. We have marks. <laughs> you get to be together, trust each other. Basically, it's like a therapy. If you have an anger or if things are going in your life, not right, you come in here and it relaxes you. It's like a therapy. She does relaxes you and gets you stress-free. I love wrestling. move we're going to show you is a snap suplex. The snap suplex is a move that every wrestler should learn how to execute. When done at the right time, you can get a good reaction. Now let's not confuse a snap suplex with a belly to back suplex or a belly to belly suplex, but we're not going to get into that right now. We'll talk about that on a future tape. Right now what we're going to talk about is a basic snap suplex. Pat, step out. Remember, anytime you're going to execute a move, you have to set it up. So let's say I give him a boot to a gut, I give him a punch, whatever I need to do to get my opponent in position. Once I get my opponent in position, his head will be down. Remember, you gotta control your opponent. You gotta bring him in. This guy is not gonna really know what you're gonna do. Once you have his head down, take your hand on the chin and back of the head, pull his head in under my left armpit. Not right, but left. Most moves in wrestling are worked off the left side. Now, if you can get in here real close, you notice his head is between my arm and the side of my body. From there, once I get locked in, I'm gonna take his arm, put it over the back of my neck. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, if you look real close again, we're protecting each other's necks. When we go over and take the bump, you won't feel a thing. The person taking the suplex has to make themselves light. One way he's doing it is a little pressure on the back with, the, with my left arm, but the majority of it's right here in his tights. Just as he's hooking me in, I'll grab me a handful of the tights, and when he's ready to go, which he'll signal to me, push off from his leg, I push off with my toes, I get the spring in my knees, it's called making myself light. I get a little lift off my legs, through my ankles and into my knees, and then I'm up. I'm just gonna grab onto his tights, right on the side of his body. You can get in here and get a good look at that. Just grab onto it. They won't tear off. At least, I hope they won't tear off. When I land on the other side, I need to land with my knees bent and my feet flat. And remember, you always have to communicate with your partner. Before we execute this move, I'm gonna tell him that I'm ready to put it on, and he's gonna oblige me by making himself light. You ready? close. His arm is bracing my neck. My arm is bracing his neck. We're both protected. That way, no one gets hurt. I help protect myself 
by landing flat. And the way I landed flat was to have my knees bent and my feet hitting the mat flat. Not like this, not like that, where everything can jar the whole body. My body's landing all in one piece, just like that. You and you, come on out here. You suplex him. Now see, the what I want to do first, see, I, what I like, you guys, everybody, everybody always rushes, you always see people hook, grab somebody and go like this with them. You know what I mean? Or this guy helps put his arm right next. What you do is, you got him, you pull him in. Where can he go? You got him all day long, okay? Then once you got him, then put his arm behind your neck and then hook in, okay? When you push down, yeah, he jumps. All right, let's see it happen. Hold that head down there, you got him. You got him, there you go. You hook in, he hooks in. Nice, good landing, good form. Both you guys did pretty good at that. Let's reverse that once. Good, good. A little separation, but that works fine. Okay, let's get next to here. Bobby, Remo. Let's see. You suplex Bobby, first time. Bully man, you got it. There you go. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, let's reverse that now. You get the big oh. man up, there you go. Now really sell this move, okay? You're the strongest man on earth. You're gonna take him over, end over end, and slam him through the mat. Now if you notice, Bobby's already set. He's pushing off of his thigh. He's gonna lock in, grab a handful of him once he gets his arm behind his head. Okay, grab his handful of Bobby. Ah! Oh. There you go. We get locked in here, and this guy doesn't wanna go up. Okay. Now. Can we change the position of our hand to go inside? <laughs> you can also go down a little lower and make sure he goes with you. You know, sometimes, you know, he can kind of kick his leg out yeah. come here on the side. I want to make sure I get this guy locked right in here. All right, and I talked to, I talked to my opponent, okay? All right, brother, we're gonna go over. If you don't go, this is gonna be the biggest ride of your life. Always thing, make them sell. One thing you might not know either, the more you help, the less it hurts when you hit the canvas. It may sound funny, but it's true. The more you push off, the less it hurts the impact. Because he's got to whip him over more to make him go over. Now, when you get to this position right here, you got your crowd into it. You really want to draw them in. So really, come on, bring him into the move. You got this guy locked in. They know what you're going to do. He knows what you can do but there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Now, first thing, one thing, you're not just gonna walk up here, let me have your head, you know what I mean? In the match, you gotta set it up with something, either a kick or a punch, something like that, right? Anyway, you pull him in, pull him in tight. Yeah, ain't nobody better than me. Take his head, arm like that, grab onto his pants, he grabs mine, I push down, there we go. Ah. Ain't nothing to it, but to do it. The next move I want to discuss is the snapmare. It's one of the most important moves in wrestling and you have to do it correctly so that your opponent does not get hurt. What you do, you grab the top of the head, bring your opponent away from the corner. He puts his hand on my on your shoulder here. As I kneel down, he takes his thumb, keeping his head elevated off the canvas, hands flat, feet flat, back flat. That's the proper position. Bill, would you like to demonstrate a few? Another thing to remember, when you give your opponent a snap mare, communication. At any given time during a match, my opponent needs to know what I'm gonna do. Always remember, once you have your opponent in the corner, you have to set up this move. So you can do it in various different ways. You can do it with a chop, punch, which your opponent will sell. Off the punch, he's already set up to bring out. You must bring your man out. 
grab him, pull him out. See where we have the head? My arm braced on the back of his head, hand on shoulder. Then I kneel with the right knee. Now, I don't let go of contact just yet. We're doing a basic snap mare. From this position right here, I still have control of my opponent. So if I'd like to take him up, I can stay in contact and bring him up and go into my next move. Keep your opponent in the corner. Whatever uh, move you want to uh, use to weaken this man, the cell back. You're gonna set him up with a snap mare, get him locked in, pull him out. Again, you don't wanna take him over from this position right here. Why? Because the chances of your man hitting his legs on the ropes are very high. You don't wanna hurt him. Pull him out. Again, drop with the right knee. Keep in contact once you snap him over. And just to prove that this is so brutal, you can be real gentle. I can take her out. Drop the knee. Very gentle. Wrestling is for everybody. And just to prove this, this is Pat, 45 years young and a professional wrestler. Pat, can you show us how you're going to take that front bump? Basically the same front bump that we were showing a little earlier. It's just as you get out, do your flip, land flat. Again, to make a note, the snap mare has two parts. I have to lock into position, hand behind his head. You want to lock your hands behind his head like this. That puts his chin right on my bicep, and his hand will go right on the top of my shoulder. From there, I want to pull him out of the corner, because as you would remember, it's always safety first. I don't want his feet to hit the bottom of the rope when I take him over. Now, once I have him locked in position and we're ready to go, it's Pat's, it's Pat's job to make himself light. Pat? The way I make myself light, he'll get started his pull just as he does. I get a little lift off my ankles, a little spring off the knees. Now I'm light enough then, he pulls me right on over. Now we lock in position, and we're ready to rock and roll. And once you get that done, it's just as easy as one, two, three. Always remember, learn your basic moves. And just to prove my point that size doesn't matter, Mom. Even moms can do it. Now I want you students to learn about elbows and kicks. Boys, demonstrate. Dale, you want to take the kick? Sure, why not? Remember, when you're kicking, you want to kick with the bottom part of your boot. Take a look at my boot right here. Very flat. You never want to kick with the toe. You can hurt your opponent that way. Remo? First kick would be to the midsection. I want to put my kick right in the midsection where you can take a little bit more punishment. Now when I'm kicking, I'm going to raise my foot and put it right up in here. Just give him a little light contact, but I want to stop with my other leg to give the illusion like I'm really laying it in there. When he sells for me like that, you get a really awesome kick. Second one, laying down flat on the mat, is a stomp. Now this can be a very vicious move. Ready? Again, I want to focus my kick right in here where he's got a little bit more protection. Come around to the front. Just making slight contact. Even 
to the thigh. But notice I'm being very careful not to kick him in the joint. You never want to do that. Do not hit the knee joint. Third. I can take him into the corner. All the way down, please. I want to make sure I put these kicks in the proper area so I don't cause any permanent damage. I want to make sure I don't kick him in the rib cage, sternum right here, or even up in his shoulder. Now, if you notice, what's really making this work is the way this guy's selling the move. He's just really, like, he's really getting hurt. He's not even touching barely at all, but he's just making the sell, and that makes it look so good. Another thing I like to do, Dale, I like to use my knees. I get him in the corner trap here like this, I like to use my knees and the ribs. Just something like this. And you notice how well he's selling that. I'm, I'm barely even touching him. He's throwing himself at me. He's coming out of the, he's coming out of the corner six inches to a foot, and he's throwing himself back as I bring my knee up. And that's how you do that. What do you want to go to next? Why don't you show us the elbows? Elbows. Oh, I just love elbows. Okay. You like being my victim? You like being my victim. Oh, yeah. All right, I want you to lay down right here. Okay. First thing you got to do, if you're taking the elbow, yes, you have to learn how to protect yourself. When I'm coming, you don't know who it is or what they're going to do to you. He's gonna, when I come into him, he's going to grab his arm like that. When I go to give him the elbow, he's going to protect himself. What he's going to do is he's going to bring up his arms and tighten up his chest to take, to take the punishment that's coming in out on top of him. Okay. Now, when I go give him the elbow, I'm not going to give him the bone. I don't want to break him up, really. I'm going to give him the flat part of the tricep. I'm right on his chest, right here. Okay? Okay. What's well, another thing you don't want to do? You don't want to come over here and drop the elbow over here because you're going to be head to head. You can bump heads, somebody can lose some more teeth, you know, and I can't afford to lose anymore. So, well, you want to either come off of this way and drop the elbow, or you come off over this way from his feet and drop the elbow. You just throw yourself up. Now, lay back, lay back nice and flat. I just barely touched him with my elbow. It's all the sound. Or you come up over here, come off. Ain't nothing to it, but to do it. And now, students, for the final part of this tape, we're gonna demonstrate to you the body slam. And then we're gonna put it all together into a match. Boys, which one of you wanna take that body slam? Now I want to show you something here. You don't want to help me pick you up in the slam. You don't want to brace yourself on me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop you on your damn head. I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna scoop him up on my forearm right here. I'm gonna hug him around, around the shoulder here. I'm gonna scoop him up around here. I'm gonna pick him up like this. Now if he don't brace himself, I'll drop him right on his damn head. See where he braces himself? Because if you don't, I will drop you on your head. Swap your head around here so you protect his back of his head. Throw him down. I'm gonna show you what happens when that guy doesn't brace himself on my leg. Whoa! He gets slammed down hard. Another thing, this boy doesn't want to come up. He's not gonna be, he's not gonna help me get him up. I'll grab him by his little school and go there. He don't want to help. You know what I'm saying? Can you pick him up? Throw him down. Walter, come on out here. Let's see what you can do, son. Let's see if you can slam Pat. All right, now I want to take this arm and scoop up under, right? Stay right behind here. The other hand up on his shoulders here. Like, give him a little hug. Like, you've been for a long time. All right. Ah, he's bracing himself. Get behind his neck. Very Slam good. Down. Very right. good. Now, if you notice, Pat was really, got himself really got a good brace here. 
and got himself straight out. So when he, when he swaps his hands, I'm putting him right down, putting him right on his back with no injuries. Even if he makes him lighter. Yes, it does. The first thing that I want to do, I want to get the hand under first or go with the left arm first? scoop right over him. Scoop's the first part of the Scoop's the first part. Right under here, then this on there. Right around his neck. You're going to go farther. There you go. Oh, and you hold like that. Yeah, you notice how he's putting his hand, he's breaking his hand there, so he don't end up on his damn head. Okay, swap your hand, protect his head. Just like so. Very good, very good. Great. So it's just real important to make sure that you get the hand around the neck. Because that kind of yes. cups it and brings it underneath, so there's exactly. Really protected. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to go slow again, too, just okay. to make sure I get around. Give right. me a scoop. First thing is a scoop, and this arm yeah. here. Right over the side. Just like that. Switch the arm. There you go. Oh. There you go. Put your hand on the thigh. Beautiful. Now, you want to get him up a little higher, okay? You don't want to have him hanging so low. Dude, where was your hand? Where was your hand on him? I didn't see it when we spun you around the rest of it. You keep your hand there the whole time. Get him up. Get him up high. Let the crowd see how high he is. Once you've made the switch, they just take him right over. You need to keep your arm on here until you're almost on the dog on ground. And if something happens, you can get drove, you drive yourself right in the mat. We're going to be calling you quadrilegic from, from the rest of the time on. Little man is gonna pick up the big man. Size doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, at least it isn't. Better. That's a beautiful bump. Beautiful. beautiful bump. Beautiful. Sold as well. Like that. Alright students, it's time to take everything that we learned today and put it into a match. Let's get it on. Okay, Jeremy. Swing back to your corner, come back to the clean match. Every match is different. First, size up your opponent before you wrestle. Close line's too low. Remember, you gotta be chest to chest. Sometimes it's just fun to stretch a guy. Oh yeah, this is good. He gets under his opponent, takes him straight up, and then slams him to the mat. Good approach. He gets under his opponent. Look at the hand positioning right here. Perfect. Takes him straight up. Yeah. 
Then he takes him straight down to the mat. Whoa, wham! You gotta love that. Oh, this is a perfect elbow right here. Look at this. His head is facing away from his opponent's head, and he lays that elbow right into his chest. <laughs> Snapmare. First, lock your opponent's head into your shoulder, pull him away from the ropes, and then snap him over. The knee drop's good. I like that. But his opponent goes around his body because he didn't pull him out from the ropes. Remember, lock your opponent's head into your shoulder, pull him away from the ropes, and snap him over. Gonna close line him, close line him. You gotta be chest to chest. No, oh, the shoot therapy needs more work. A pro has to be more vicious with those stops, like me. This flying shoulder tackle is executed by two pros in a real wrestling ring at a real wrestling school. This chair shot is executed by two pros. You know the deal. Don't try this at home. Let's recap today what we did. First, you want to start off. Always remember, have your knee pads, tape, boots, or a good athletic shoe to start training in the wrestling ring. Remember, always stretch before you step inside the ring. The last thing you want to do is pull any type of muscles or any injuries. And always remember, you gotta do your tumbling. That's the first thing you need to learn if you want to be a professional wrestler. What we've done today, if you remember, was laying down, hugging yourself, slapping, properly with the palm of your hands on the canvas before then going to up uh, to a squat position and throwing both legs up. Another one that we did today was the from raising one leg up and right before landing shooting the, the, the second leg straight up in the air and onto your, flat on your back. And then we did the one where you shoot both legs up at the same time. It's a higher bump. Once you're well advanced that is, you know, you definitely have got to take that bump. Well, I think that's a much easier bump to perform myself because I hate picking up one leg and then going down. But I know we have to learn that. That's exactly. one of the most important things we got to do. Exactly. And if you don't know how to take that bump properly, if you don't start from the bottom on up, you're going to hurt yourself. I'm right about that. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed this uh, first tape and we've showed you a lot of basic moves and but remember you have to train 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 it is very important so that you don't get hurt exactly actually I don't think any of you guys be trained in your backyard but if you're gonna do it you gotta think safety you gotta think pads you gotta think protection make sure this is what you want to do this isn't a joke it's real you're gonna get hurt but if you don't take the time to get the proper training Something pretty bad can happen. Like busted ribs, busted thumbs, broken teeth, broken legs, ankles, you know? You always got problems. Even on a good day, you still get banged up. You're gonna get out of wrestling what you put into it. If you get if you put into it bad training, well you're gonna have bad matches and you are gonna get hurt. <laughs> the most important things in wrestling is fitness, training, and practice. And above all, no steroids and no drugs. We have seen illusion and reality begin to overlap and fuse.